Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take your health back. We are coming to you live from our ThinkTech Hawaii studios in downtown Honolulu and my home office in Makiki. Today, we will hear from Hawaii's diva of song, Melvine Lee. Melvine will enlighten us on how she is coping with a semi-retired life, which actually looks like somebody's regular working life, because you know she's not going to slow down. But we shall also ask her, how is she dealing with the doldrums of life as well? Welcome, Melvine Lead. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> so let's get started, girl. I know we're going to talk, 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 and before you know it, it's pow, but we got to start. <laughs> okay, here we go. So there are many moods and sides of Melvine Lead. So much enthusiasm for life and charisma. How did you develop this character, Melvine? I think ever since I was young, because um, I was uh, just so rascal, yeah, and so mischievous, like you. <laughs> <laughs> I say funny spankings because I was naughty. <laughs> and you love it. I learned. I learned. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, and that's what we need, right? Discipline, spanking, it works, right? Yes, yes. And then how I got to be in the mood, different moods is when I started, uh, when the music started to enter my life at a very oh. young age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How to be happy, how to be sad. You know, I didn't know anything about love then when I was too young. Yeah. Right. And when I found out, I went, oh, shucks, give it all to Wendy. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and then you got it all back. I got it all. There yeah. you go. We're going to talk about all that. One end of it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I know at one point in your career, you worked with three other legends, divas, yes. and you were known as Hawaii's four divas. Please share with us, what was that like? I mean, come on, one yeah. diva is bad enough, but there were four of you? You know what? I got to tell you, we all said at the beginning, leave our egos outside of the door. Wow. We get inside that room, all of us are equal. Nobody's right. better than anybody. Well, I never thought of that anyway. So, and so we all thought like that. Well, well not all, <laughs> Some, but anyway, but <laughs> we all had to do that. And we did, we did. And it was really nice. We had a nice camaraderie, very wow. sisterhood, you know, really close. And uh, it was, it was easy because loyal, especially she right. always like, she and I, we like to take the bull by the horns, you know? Right. And so, and loyal she, musically, you can't beat that girl. She she was very brilliant. She was brilliant. Mm -hmm. We all miss her tremendously, but yeah. her voice and her legendary lifestyle and her gift of song really lives on. And she and I used to do shows together at the Ooh. at the arena in in the arena Blaisdell Arena now in the center, and then wow. I remember that and and several other times. And she and I carried the whole shows al alone, just she and I, you know, and we packed the place in. And uh -huh. so, you know, we, because we think alike, we knew exactly if we, if we have, uh, uh, like if four of us were on stage, and if there was a low, Loyal and I look at each other from the back of, of Nohe and Carol, and we just do this, and then we just carry on, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it was like a, you know, a, a really beautiful thing that we shared. Oh, what a gift to have worked with her, and the memories yes. that you cherish. I'm so, I you're miss so her. Bad. Of course, we all do. Now I'd like to ask you to share with us a little bit about your family. I know that you were blessed with one biological daughter. Tell yes. us about her and her talents. She, she inherited, I think, everything from me, actually. All yeah. her talented uh, talents uh, from singing. She sings very beautifully. She has a beautiful voice. She can pick up any instrument. What she, she sees you play, I'm sure she does the same thing like me, yeah? And mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's smart. And she's like like me. <laughs> anyway, she's mini a, you for she's sure. Like mini, yeah, yeah, she's a cat, but she has her own personality. She's not as uh, out. She's kind of shy in the, in her own way. Right. But she's a captain also. She has a license for a hundred ton vessel, and mm -hmm. she, she teaches and she's uh, she's teaching Hawaiian culture now, and she takes her kids to to gymnastics and she does all things things that a mother should do. Oh. Just, and I taught her this. I said. Kaula, if you want something done, you take the bull by the horn. You do it yourself. You want it right. done right. Don't wait. You ask someone to do something. If they don't move the first second, you go on. You, you're right on it. Yeah. And I know so. I also know she gave you the two beautiful granddaughters that you just cherish and adore. Yes, they're my honey bunnies. Yes. yes. 
Yes, how oh, blessed, how oh, blessed. I'm and blessed. you know, I, I say that she's your mini me, but you know what, <laughs> truly we all know, okay, no more two of you, no can, no can, all right? <laughs> no can, just no can. <laughs> no can, no can, no need. <laughs> yeah, no can, yeah, no need because you can, okay? And you are and you will. Right, yeah. so just keep on going and keep on canning, okay, girl? And I am. <laughs> you are. You is. You is. <laughs> yes, I is. I is. <laughs> now, let's talk about what causes that twinkle in your eye, in your eyes, I should say. You are married to the love of your life, Mike Reyes. You're someone so that I, Someone that I should have been in my life years ago. Years ago. But how did you guys really meet? Well, I was having a hard time with my last marriage and I and I just kind of was in a doldrum. Yeah. And I I, I wasn't thinking of anybody else in my life. I said, oh, this is it. I don't want to, you know, and, uh, but how we've known each other since I was 15 years old, but we never saw each other except once in Vegas and, and he was married to someone else. And then, of course, then that was it. Right. But then when this happened to me, when I was going through my divorce, I um, I he came into where I performed and I saw him and, you know, we said hello and everything. And it was <laughs> like the Lord brought us together. Amen. Amen. Knows, you know, yeah. And, and it just moved so quickly and was very quick. Wow. More than know, I expected. It's, it's I didn't all expect timing. That. Melvin, it's all timing. You may not have been ready to receive such a gift. And he wasn't ready as well. But when you both were, God brought you both together. And look at what you have. did. Yes, he yeah. sure did. We and I know we are all so happy for the both of you. Truly, I know truly happy. everybody. They were taking bets on me before. <laughs> <laughs> I know you oh, lost me. God, you God. lost me a lot of money, you know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. I still love you. I love you oh, too. <laughs> you can pay me back later on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, Mommy, I, I, I've been watching you since I was much younger. I won't say a little girl, but <laughs> younger at the Ola Moana Hotel and everywhere that you went and wherever you perform, I've always tried my best to be there, especially in these days, you know, um, from the Elks Club to International Marketplace to Chai's, wherever you were. So where did it all start for your performing career? At the Garden Bar, the Hilton Wine Village, it, it used to be just the Hawaiian Village. Mm -hmm. Henry J. Kaiser owned that ho uh, hotel before. And he had bungalows, you know, and, and he had the Garden Bar where people would go down and dance and to the music of Bernie Hellman. And my mom was working as a, as a cashier, host, a cashier at the Hilton. And, I mean, at the Hawaiian Village. And mm -hmm. so she, said, she gave me a note and she said, take this to the drummer. So I took it down and I gave it to the waitress and the waitress gave it to him. And then Bernie called me up to sing. And I was shocked because I was kind of greenhorn. I was just, gee, I just came out of a, a beauty contest of Miss, Ho Miss Hawaii. I was fourth runner up, you know, <laughs> and, and I sang Moon River. That's the first time I ever sang in front of that many, many people at the, Hawaii, the uh, Waikiki Shell. And, and you know, it was unreal because before I went on stage, I'm talking about the night of the, the pageant, the mm -hmm. talent night. Before I went on stage, I was so nervous. But the minute I walked out on that stage, I it no more butterflies. I sang as if I've been singing for years. I sang Moon River. Yeah, funny. And then when I got off stage, I was nervous. And I thought to myself, did I do that? You know what I mean? It was unreal. And then so when I sang at the garden bar, it was like I, I'd been doing it for years. And so he asked me to join his band, and I did. So it started from there. Wow, you just make things happen. I mean, guys, even with this show today, Melvin um, accidentally double booked herself. I'm sure she gets this problem all the time where she's in such demand. Everybody wants her here and there. And so we made this commitment a little while ago, but she had to take another gig today, yeah. and which wasn't really a gig, but it was at the Natsunoya Tea Room. And I know that you were being honored with by the Kaumanu uh, Women's Society. So tell yeah. us what happened just like 30 minutes before you ran home to be on our show today. Uh, well, they, they presented me with this beautiful gold um, uh, medal wow. of the Kaamana Society and made me wow. an honorary member. Wow, and, you know, I, I had tears in my eyes. I, I, I didn't expect this at all. Oh my gosh, I'll treasure this with all my life. I'm telling wow. you. Wow, and you know what? See, God brought Mike to go.
guard you because that's so precious that anybody would want that as well. So thank you, Mike, for being not only her love of her life and her bodyguard and her driver that gets her everywhere, but just protecting each other and loving on each other. But so, you know, I'm you know I'm his bodyguard too, yeah, physically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know you take good care of him because I know you can cook like crazy. And <laughs> I know you make people laugh. And I know that laughter is one of the best medicines for yes. everyone. Oh, so yeah. you 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 helped me through many times by just Facebooking and laughing at each other and with each other. So continue, my dear blessed beyond. And I know you are blessed as well, Melvin. <laughs> so I had to throw this Thank one you. photo in now. It's with you and me, when you were a special guest of Margaret View Cats, who created the Hawaii Music Walk of Fame, where we honored seven legends of yesteryear. Did yes. you enjoy that evening? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure you must have known all of those seven legends. Yes, I did, of course. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I... Uh, the memories are just, it's like a, it's like a page after page. And you know, just, if you yeah. stack pages on the, on the desk, it's so high. You can, of all these people. I, in know. I mean, and you're like an encyclopedia of all these uh, memories of all these legends of yesteryear. I mean, from Israel, Kamaka, Viva Ole, Don Ho, Hilo Hadi, Auntie Alice, Chick Daniels, Alfred Apaka, and Gabby Pahinui. Yes. Right. All yes. your buddies. Oh yes. And men and much more much more yeah not just uh, professionally but i know that you guys uh had deep roots um and many many great experiences that i mean it's treasures, treasures. i just got through telling my husband not too long ago i i'm so glad that i was born in this in the year that i was and in the era because you know why i've gone through all the phases. In fact, I said that on my show, on, on my Facebook show, just Sunday. I went through the phases and, and I've lived through it all. And the, when the music and everybody was just, so, the camaraderie was just unbelievable. And we and we helped each other on stage, you know? We just jumped on stage and, and you know, and that's and when we saw each other, even if you meet somebody for the first time, it's like we knew each other. That's how the old timers made us feel, yeah. the newcomers. Yeah. Like they knew us for a long time. And I, I was so honored when I met Gabby, when I met Emma Virio, when I met, when I met you know, all these big names, you know, and Alfred Apaka, I felt like, oh, he, and he treated me like I was he, he, a long time, like he's known me for a long time. Mm -hmm. Wow, you must be a great student because when I met you, that's exactly how I felt. Aww. And you embraced me with open arms and open heart. And we just sat and we talked for hours like we knew each other from yeah. the time we was in Molokai together. But I was yeah. from Miley, you was from Molokai, so different ends of the world. But but still, you welcome me as a treasured sister. You know why? You know why? Because you're like me and I'm like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same kind, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except you, you don't sing. <laughs> yeah, I don't sing. Oh, oh I don't sing. But um, I can count money. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, Chinese blood. Yeah. That's my talent, you know, when I went in Miss Chinatown. I, I know, one dollar, two dollar. <laughs> wow. So, Melvin, you are a woman of many, many talents, not just singing, not just painting. I mean, I know, look at, with jewelry making, you made my creations. Uh, when I go out and I wear this, everybody asks me, hey, who made that? Where you got that from? I said, oh, my dear friend, Auntie Melvin Bead. She you say Auntie. No, I didn't say Auntie. She I you. I could tell everybody you my auntie. <laughs> you go there. You tell them. You tell them, girl. I'd be honored to be your auntie. And I tell them that you made this special for me with all the love. And when I wear this, I feel you with me. And you know what? They all look at that and they all like. Even one time when I wear your big hat, you know, you gave me that hat. Yeah. And I thought, look at me. I look like one kilo hatty lady. Remember the time we went to, um, what is his name? Tie a yellow ribbon around the Odo yes. right? Remember we went to the concert? And I went, oh, Bodo Bodo, but we put that hat on it. Oh, I was Tony Orlando. Tony Orlando. Tony Orlando, yeah. yeah. Remember, and we, oh, my goodness. It was like the best feeling because I was all bust from the ocean. Put that hat on, and I was glam, glam, glam. And you show up with a baseball hat. Oh. <laughs> I know. Oh, hey, that was my deal. But <laughs> you also learned or knew the crocheting. I said, Melvin can crochet. And when did you start crocheting, girl? My grandmother taught me at a very, very young age. Yeah, she taught me how to crochet, knit, sew, everything. Cook. Wow. Yeah. That, that scarf. And in fact, uh, I have one. I have it here. Look. Ah. There you go, yeah. girl. I tell you, yes. I have it right at my desk all the time. There oh, you go. Look, oh, I feel like royalty. Even look at this. 
right? <laughs> yeah, Beautiful, no. right? Yeah. I taught you all. Perfect. Yeah. You, think I, you think I just picked the stuff from you and I put them in the closet? No, girlfriend. I still wear them. I, <laughs> I, I see the it. dust. I see the dust. No lie. No, no dust, Lugo. <laughs> No, I'm not even sneezing. You see what I mean? But yeah, you crochet. Like, where do you get the time to crochet? At night or when I'm watching TV, yeah. yeah. Wow. But I got to so, be in the mood. I got to tell you, every stitch on that and every shell that I put together have prayers. You know, I know, I know. You're full of prayers, you know, and people turn to you because they need your prayers and they receive your prayers, of prayers of healing and just prayers to get them through another day. And so we so, um, we look forward to asking you for prayer and then and you're right there to generously give us prayer every moment of the day. So Melvin, we appreciate that as well. Thank you. Not just your gift of singing, but your gift of prayer and speaking to Keakua and Keakua responding so quickly when you make those requests you know i've been to your beautiful home and i noticed that you have a stone garden with your friends names on them what do the not, stones not, represent not only friends strangers too oh. uh, that need prayers everyone every stone there i said prayers for wow. and, and when i pass that even today when every time i pass there there's this feeling that i have that i say a prayer it, it's it's just it's normal. It's just natural already. Like yeah. this prayer. Okay, I'm here praying for you. Yeah. Heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or God bless you. Yeah. Yes. Every stone on that in that garden. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you. Welcome. You know, and I know you've had a few health challenges. Um, yes. and, and you were very open and very um, open to share uh, what you experienced. Would you just Give us a little bit of insight of what you're what you've been challenged with in this past year. Okay, 2018, took I took chemo because I found out I had leukemia, yes. uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and that was my first oncologist. And then so I went to the second oncologist to get us another opinion. Yeah, and of course he said the same thing, and he wanted me to take chemo. So I did, and my body didn't take too well to the uh, talk to the um, uh, they call it cocktails. Yeah, right. they mix all it chemical, yeah. And then so I got really, really sick. <clears throat> I mean, I was sick the whole time when I was taking that, the, the infusions, yeah? Right. And so I went through that phase and then I went into remission because it brought down my white cells. And then now recently, my white cells were up again and they, they watch for that, yeah? Yes. And so and now I'm taking, they tried with the infusion again. I got really, really sick. And so the doctor said, okay, we're going to try pills. This is my, actually my one, two, three, my third, fourth, fourth oncologist now. Wow. Yeah. So he told me to take the pill. They have new pills out called Calquins. Calquins. Mm -hmm. And so I'm taking that. It's 100 milligrams each. So I take 200 milligrams a day. And then I, I was so happy. He said, okay, it went down. This is just the last time. And it, the other time. And he says, it's down. I said, good. I don't have to take it anymore. He said, no, you're going to have to take it for the rest of your life. Oh. So that's the thing. Yeah. So, but I don't care because as long as I, and you know what? I, I don't feel when I take the Chemo, because people get different reactions, yeah? Right. But I refuse. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to lay in right. that bed. I refuse. It. I just keep myself going. And yes. if you have the strength to do things, get up and do it. So, right. and I don't like when I call my friends and I say, what you doing? They say, oh, nothing. No, get a hobby. Yes. Do something. Yes. Yes. Help others or help yourself, you know? And, right. And enjoy the rest of your lives, especially at my age at 78. Yes. Actually, I about 78. I thought I was going to die way before. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, you try to put your face real close to the camera. Guys, you know what? No more even the kind of wrinkles or the kind of crow's, what, leg or feet, what you call that. Beautiful. Beautiful. you 70. No, oh, no can tell. And you were challenged with a little health bump. You know what? Superb. And like, what was it? Kimo said? What did Kimo tell you today? You know what? You know, I got it. <laughs> I forgot what he said. You were the healthiest. Oh yeah, no, not chemo. Jay oh, Laren told me Laren, that. Jay Laren, the, yeah. the healthiest sick person I ever met. <laughs> yeah, and the most beautiful sick person we ever knew. I mean, and you know you, amazing. I I don't know. Um, you 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 must be saying prayers, and God is answering all the prayers for everyone else. But He answers your prayers as or all of our prayers for you because, cannot tell. And you 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 say, oh, maybe I'm not going to come on Facebook this Sunday. But you know what? 
So you know that the Facebook message comes, guys, I'm up and running. I'm and back. <laughs> I'm back. And not only are you back, bro, you come back with what theme? And you come back <laughs> with names and you ask for requests. And this is not just from people from Hawaii. You're talking to people all over the world right. and they send you requests and you just nail it every time. How do you manage to do that through all of this? I had good teachers in my life, uh, going through my life in my career, because I learned how to sing jazz. Jazz yeah. is the root of all music, you know, to me, because when you can sing jazz, you can any genre that you take, you know, it's the phrasing, you know. In fact, I had just had lunch with Jeanette Trevius yesterday. Oh wow! Yeah, and and I gave her a bunch of my old earrings, but beautiful. I say old, but they're they're nice they're earrings. Beautiful. You know, a whole stack. I gave her. I, I know. Said, Jeanette, you're a star now. I said you got to dress like one, and mm. I want you to to uh, your voice. You have a beautiful voice. You have a unique voice, and I told told her about her voice, how she can use her voice in certain ways. I was giving her advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the problem is some of these singers nowadays they don't want to hear advice. They sing one way and that's it. You know what I mean? But they don't realize. Our voices is like an instrument. We can change it. We can make it sound like sound like a, a, a bass. We can make it sound like a high trumpet, or we can make it sound like a regular, you know, we have different levels of tones. Right, and they right. have to know how to use it. That is why I can sing rock and roll. I can sing Latin. I can sing Hawaii and Haigo with my voice yodeling, you know? Yes. I can sing yes. uh, country, everything. You know what I mean? As you, as you dance hula, at that, you know, not just dance hula, not just sing, but you can combine them and sound good. I mean, that's that's a talent that you're born you're born with, and God bless you that you released and you maxed out who He created you to be. And you know, when you give Jeanette advice like that, she's a professional, and yes. you know, I know she's a brilliant uh, young woman, uh, a songbird as well. Taking that advice from you. And that will take her through her whole career to be as successful as you are. Yes, I really love that girl. And I, yes. I had tears in my eyes when I told her at the table yesterday. I really had tears in my eyes. And I said, you know, Jeanette, I really love you. I love your heart. I love your kindness. I love your, your personality, you know, the way she is. Yes. I said, don't ever change and stay humble, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so important. Yeah. So important. You know, you have so much words of wisdom and kindness from your heart. So the more you can share with all of us those words, I tell you, so powerful because you're just uplifting so many people with your heart through these times, especially within the last two years and who, who knows when. So and keep you know, on inspiring. I always think that I cannot thank God enough. Yes. It's like I cannot have, I cannot thank him enough because when I look back at my young age, when I, I'm, I was, must have been only three years old, my grandfather gave me an ukulele and he, he played it and he put it in my hand and I played exactly what he was playing. Wow. And then he played, the, when I got older, to play the guitar, he played the guitar, he put the guitar in my hand, I played what he played. You know, wow. key and stuff like that, yeah. And then the piano, I just watched this person playing. I went to the piano and I started playing. You know, it's things like that that I'm very thankful. Oh, you know? you're blessed. Beyond words, you're blessed. I mean, I watch you when you set up. You're over there, ding, ding, ding. Too much, too much. I'm like, I can't hear it. But you're like tuning it up <laughs> and getting it ready. And then you want perfection and nail it all the time. So, yes, you are truly living the gift that Keoku has given to you. So... When you encourage others to max out who Keokua brought them to be, um, you're building so many lives in such a positive way, Melvin. So thank you. thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I know that you've been entertaining us for many, many, many years, even before 16. the pandemic on Facebook. Oh, years. oh, okay. On, on screen, I mean, on stage. But wow. on Facebook, you were, you're so committed to making sure that you don't leave us hanging on Sundays. And I know that you've even done it before pandemic. So I also know that every Sunday you can turn on and you're going to be there. What drives you to continue that commitment of you're up and you're getting yourself ready. You got the background change. You got the theme going. You delegate different music for everyone. How do you have that much energy and commitment every Sunday to do that on Facebook for us? Because we are brought up to know as musicians, yeah, that music is healing. It's yeah. very healing. And I know a lot of people out there, certain songs touch them, you know what I mean? And I know that, and I know that. And it, it, it 
opens up their minds, opens up their hearts. And they reminisce, a lot of them reminisce back when, oh, I remember this song and I remember where I was and I remember who I was with, or I don't want to remember who I was with and you know what I mean, but, <laughs> but things like that, you know. But right. I, make them, I make them feel as though they're my friend and they're sitting here with me in my living room. That's yeah. what I want them to feel yeah. like. You know yeah. what I mean? Like and they're my friend, I don't know them. Yeah. You do a great job. And if you could, you would have everybody in your living room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I can always remember one day I went to your home and we were just like hanging out. I think I brought my friends, Carol and Vic with me. And then we were just hanging out and you know, we were laughing like our butts off and we were having so much fun with just us two guys talking story in the corner with our phones. And you were like, I don't know what you were doing to me, my phone, your phone, but you were making me look beautiful you did all these filters <laughs> you made me look like avatar you made me look like what <laughs> yeah. i'm like what the hell girl who needs tv who needs anything else except just love and compassion <laughs> to spend with the people that you treasure the most i mean i had the exactly. most the best this time and you know i just didn't want that time to end and me so too. yeah and you know sometimes i you know, like when you're in the bed and i in the bed i mean separately okay guys so <laughs> i know mike is probably wondering what the hell are you laughing your butt off for <laughs> and me and you were just going and texting texting back 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 and forth back and forth so much fun and i just laughing my my head off lying by myself with my phone and you on the other end um, i mean those are that's just precious moments and i think that is precious just, yes so i just thank you so much for that so now I want to give a shout out to Mike, but not only is Mike your soulmate, I know that he's your best friend and he's also your best caregiver as you are to him. So I just want to say mahalo, Mike, for just being in her life, in our lives, because, you know, since you came along, yeah, I don't have as many of those. Oh, no, I got to go talk with Melvin and blah, 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 because she got you now. She got <laughs> me in bed. She playing cookies with you, right? So Melvin, under the you bus. Give, put like, you under the bus. Yeah, you, but it's okay, Mike. You, you, it's okay. I don't mind. But she, Wendy, I want to thank you because with this program that you have, you have really enlightened many dark corners and dark areas that people don't you. understand about health. You yeah. know, it is yes. so important. Amen. That's Amen. important because without health, we wouldn't have the the luxuries of of the the natural things that we that God gives us every yes, single yes. day and every breath that we take oh, you know so thank you Melvin but you know I just want to ask you do you want to give a shout out to Mike I mean he's probably right there in your your living room somewhere give I a shout out to Mike I wouldn't want you to see <laughs> <laughs> oh, mahalo mahalo TMI yeah TMI <laughs> yes I have the best husband in the whole world yes, yes you I do. do so you know Mike if you get one brother I'm looking Okay. <laughs> uh, you know guys mike and melvin right now um it's time for us to say aloha and goodbye so you've been watching taking your health back on think tech hawaii mahalo to melvin lean mahalo to mike thank you for talking story with us and making our world so much better of a sounding place to live uh, in aloha everybody and aloha yeah. wendy aloha and please keep on blessing us with your god-given talents of song i'm wendy low your melvin need and i know mike is right there we'll be back with another edition and taking your health back aloha everyone aloha aloha <laughs>